you like your uh, secondary performances against Minnesota? Um, I thought we did a good enough job to be in the game. I don't think we did a well enough job to win the game. So, back to the drawing board. What kind of challenge are you expecting just with the amount of playmakers Colorado has? Yeah, it's a tremendous talent or, or challenge. They're one of the best teams in the country. Uh, it's not just one or two players. It's not just a tempo. Like they have really good players all over the field, and they're gonna challenge us. Uh, they're explosive. They throw. They take shots. Um, they have really good athletes, fast people. You know, it's gonna be a, a tremendous challenge and an opportunity for us. You know. So it sounds like you weren't maybe surprised by what happened with Colorado. Colorado against TCU. Yeah, I don't. It's hard to be surprised. I mean. All the guys, all those guys do is win. You know, they've always been successful. Like, their coach is one of the greatest players of all time. Like, he's he's an achiever. Like, I I don't understand the surprise, but for me, it's it's just all football, and they made more plays than the other guys. What's the key, just from a technique standpoint, in defending those deep balls that they're bound to throw? Um, anytime you have your back to the football as a DB, it's tough. Um, we just got to go and be ready for you know what we see on tape and um, just try to play the ball and play his hands and get in good position and make plays whenever we need to. How hard is it for a guy like Travis Hunter to play all the snaps he did on both offense and defense at a high level like that? Yeah, I mean, it's obvious that he's a different human, right? He's a different kind of guy. Like he's like coach, like his coaches say, he's one of those guys. He's him. So. Uh, it's hard to play 50 snaps, 60 snaps. It's definitely hard to play 100. And you say 30? Man, that's, that's a tough deal. So it's, that was a good job by him. And his coaches and his training staff and his athletic uh, performance people, all of that. It's a good job by them. What did you like about your defensive backs in the first game? Um, the same things I've liked since I got here. Like, those guys want to win. They want to play hard. They want to be physical. Um, we didn't have any uh, MAs, any coverage bust and uh, I thought we tackled well when it was time for us to tackle. I thought we played well in a bunch of spots. Just unfortunately, we play a position where you can't have a bad play. You know, we don't have that level of, you know, it's not okay, right? So if a D lineman makes a mistake, then we can still get the ball on the ground. Or they get beat or if a linebacker gets beat, we can still get the ball on the ground. If a DB gets beat, the entire world knows it. But that's life, though. You know, like, that's just how it is playing DB. What are the things you want to tighten up on? <sighs> to be honest, man, I really take the same approach every day. I'm not like a reactionary coach. You know, I, we, we preach the same things every day. And whether we won 100 to 0 and gave up 0 yards or we lost 100 to 0 and gave up 10,000 yards, it would be the same thing, the, the everyday things that I talk about, you know. Um, and that's really it, you know. The uh, Minnesota receiver made a great play, obviously on that fourth and ten. Yeah. Played. How do you? How do you? I mean, how do you attack that one in particular with, with Malcolm? I mean, is it is, is it just the guy made it beat him there? Yeah. He, he, I know he made an inside move, went out. Obviously, yeah. gets his foot in bounds. Like when you're coaching that on film, what, what, how do you, how do you where do you start? I, told, I tell Malcolm and whoever else gets beat, those, that's on me. If I didn't put him in that position to where his reaction to that is second nature, then I didn't do a, well, a good enough job. Um, I, the only thing that they must bring is their effort and their discipline and their violent nature. Like Everything else is on me. So that is what it is. I got to do a better job of putting him in that situation and making sure that he aligns where he needs to align. And it, that is solely on me. It's a, it's a big week for Clinton Newsom this week. Obviously, yeah. going against you know, Mike Hunter and their other receivers. How have you seen him kind of embrace that moment going throughout this week? If I'm a good coach at all, those guys come with the same attitude every day, right? Like, again, like DB is a position where I'm not a very good athlete, but if I catch the one of our DBs in the wrong, with the wrong eyes or the wrong leverage, I could, I could probably catch a ball on them. So, um, Again, they have great players. Um, I think I have competitive players that will be ready to make plays and go to war, and we'll see how it turns out. We'll have bad plays. I'm sure it happens every game. So 
Um, I don't want him to get too high. I don't want him to get too low. I just want to have him take the same approach that he takes, that he's taken since the spring, since I got him. You know, I'm proud of him, and I'm proud of the rest of the group. Coach, how chaotic could it be on the field for a DB when an offense needs to go as fast as Colorado showed the team? If, if it wasn't real chaotic for defenders, I'm not sure they would do it. Uh, going fast is hard for everyone. Um, we just got to take a deep breath and make sure that we're preparing and hydrating and getting in the best shape we can and putting our bodies in the best position to be successful on Saturday. And It's going it, it, to be a challenge for us. This is why they do it. What are you expecting just from the scene, the atmosphere in Boulder for Deion Sanders' first home game? Not gonna lie to you. I don't. I don't have any expectations. I the, the 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 scenery and the fandom. None of that's for me. You know. I just want my guys to play well. I want us to play well as a defense, and I want us to play well as a team. I, I don't get really caught up in much else. Thanks. Respectfully. What we saw out of Omar Brown, Deshaun Singleton, is that what you've been seeing pretty much throughout? Yeah, I'm. I'm not surprised at those guys at all. I see it every single day. I wish you could be a fly on the wall in my meeting room with the level of like intent and detailed and like legitimate questions and recall and just preparation and just every, like those guys are everything that I've ever wanted to coach. So I'm not surprised by any of that. I'm not surprised by Omar's success. Like I said, it happened with GIF around the, la the spring game, the light hit and it's been on. Now it's a floodlight. And same thing with Omar. Like I expect those guys to just keep getting better because they figured it out. They know what I want. They know what I expect. And now, as me, as a standard setter, I feel like those guys are trying to go above the standard that I set. So eventually I have to raise it. I'm just, we'll see what happens. So is that the next challenge then after this past game, you raise a standard? Here's a yep. It, when, if you talk to me next week, I'll be trying to raise it again. And eventually you get to a point where we play lights out football and we help the team win. This situation and the altitude the tempo that they like to play, you know, yep. if they have the ball for a lot of plays, do you anticipate needing your depth more, even more than you did? Yeah, yeah. Well, every week I talk to the, the guys that are not starters about proving to me on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday how much they want to be in. I talk to them about I, I don't really control the depth chart or how much they play. I think they do. Um, so we got some guys trying to step up this week because they know you know, if we play 90 plays, I can't expect the, the starters to play 90 plays. Um, hopefully it doesn't come down to 90 plays, but if it does, then I have to put some of those guys in. So hopefully today and tomorrow and Friday they show me they deserve to be in. I know you're on the defensive uh, side of the ball, but how do you see Jess Sims respond to practice against you guys? Um, Je I treat Jeff like I treat all of my players. <laughs> like we just go one day at a time. And I, don't, I don't think he has to overreact. I think Again, that's a position where things are magnified and mistakes, the margin of error is this small and one mistake could end up on YouTube and Twitter and that. So he's, again, just going to attack it and get in his drills and work on what his coach tells him to work on. I have a lot of confidence in Jeff. You know, one or two different outcomes of the, and then we, we're having a different conversation, right? But again, that's football. The margin of error for that position and the DB position is, Unfortunately, really small.